My name is Tarina Lewis, and I am employed at the American Mathematical Society. When I was young, uh, mathematics was always easy, but it was also refreshing for me. Um, my mother surrendered to cancer when I was in primary school. So I used mathematics and basketball as vessels um, to get through the hard times. In 10th grade, my teacher, uh, my geometry teacher, Mr. Arthur DeFabio at John McDonald Senior High School in New Orleans, asked me if I had been tested for giftedness in mathematics. And so whether I was talented in mathematics or not didn't really matter to me. The moment was powerful because someone saw me at that time. So I didn't know the steps to take to become a mathematician. So for a long time, I aspired to become a mathematics teacher. And then I went to Southern University at New Orleans, where I met one of my mentors, Dr. Omar Jola, and he massaged the idea of becoming a mathematician and he helped guide me along um, the path. At the American Mathematical Society, my division is public facing. So my team and I think of ways to shift the career trajectory of mathematicians and students who study mathematics. mathematics. And together, um, we are motivated to shape the mathematics profession into one that is more equitable and racially and ethnically diverse. One of the struggles uh, that I have in my current position at the American Mathematical Society is helping the organization to stay true to their public facing message. And so um, for me, it causes some very like intense um, discussions and conversations and um, sometimes even less than favorable uh, relationships occur uh, because of it. And so one of the things that is near to me is that whatever you say publicly, you back it up privately. And so that has been a struggle for me, but I'm working through it. Um, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been on the search um, just to try to figure out who I am. And so when I think about um, my proudest accomplishment, it's one that um, affects a broad group of people and they don't even know it. And so for me, it's having the intestinal fortitude to stand against the status quo. And even if the almighty God is the only force that's standing with me. And so um, getting to that point is tough for people. And so I'm there. And so that's I, that makes me proud. <laughs> I spoke um, about two people already in this presentation, Mr. Arthur DeFabio and Dr. Joel Majola, who was essential um, non-family uh, members that helped me to get to where I am. Um, my biggest non-family supporter, a confident mentor, uh, and I affectionately say a friend is Dr. Sandra Rucker. We met when I applied for a position at Clark Atlanta University. And I think um, our connection is uh, bigger than like, like it's bigger than um, the, the current uh, times. I think she's connected to my destiny in some type of way. And um, she tells me when I'm wrong and, and applauds me when I'm right. And she motivates me <laughs> when I'm tired. So uh, that's my biggest um, non-family supporter. And then I have three brothers, 
they're Mel, Tori, and Melvin Lewis. And they just have been stable forces forces and um, a source of love throughout the entire time that I've been making waves in the math community. And, um, you know, when I want to quit, I just need to talk. I just talk to one of them and they're like, what? You letting that take you out? <laughs> so, and then um, I've been at the AMS for almost three years. And the mo and this has been the most challenging position of my career. And so I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my partner, Devetta Gillum, who has kept me focused and ready at all times um, and, and has been um, a source of support. I keep going back to my employment um, at the American Mathematical Society because it helps me um, to see the world differently than, than I have been seeing it sort of in, in my circle and um, with the previous jobs that I've had. And, and one of the things, one of the major things that it helped me to realize is that racism still exists. Um, and there are many ways that people camouflage it, but um, the ones that I've heard are the terms such as rigor, merit-based, it has to be competitive. Um, and I think those terms are used to sort of kill careers. Um, and when we kill careers, you know, we are also um, affecting generational, um, we're having a generational impact. And what I hope to inspire the mathematics community to do is to stand um, 10 toes down and never sacrifice who the creator has ordained you to be. Um, and one of the things that I see is that when people are in spaces, sometimes um, there's conversations that go on and you sit and you be quiet and then you go home and talk about it to your friends like, oh, that wasn't right. But have the courage to speak in those, in those situations, in those meetings. Um, because if you don't, then, then you're a part of the problem. And I want the world to know that um, I will say we, and I will let the community think of who we could be um, are not okay at the American Mathematical Society. But uh, we wake up every morning and we risk it all. And uh, for, for us, there are situations sometimes that, that try to force us out or, or you know, people do things to try to make us quit. But where's the honor in that? And um, my message to the mathematics community is just that we have work to do. <laughs>